I'd like to call to order the uh, February 1st, 2023 Townsend Conservation Commission meeting at 7 p.m. Can I have a roll call, please? Joan Savoy, present. Linda Matt, present. James Gates, present. Patricia Jamal, present. And look, we're present, but I can't see anybody. <laughs> we can't see you either. You're fine, Ann. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Are you I'm Jessica? Is Ann in Florida? No, I'm here, but I've been sick and I didn't want to give it to any of you. Thank you. This is my first time back um, in a while, so. Uh, this meeting is being video recorded. Is anyone else recording? Chairman's additions and or deletions. Uh, we're going to be adding 3.1 uh, wild and scenic grant application. Joan uh, completed. Um, chair's report. Uh, I made a site visit out to 158 Main Street today and uh, just did some observation. It looks like the it was uh, dwellings were flagged and uh, more hay bales were put out. Um, then we have review and approve the meeting minutes from 12 14 22. We won't have a chance to review them. I didn't know. Several pages I don't see. Do we want a motion to put it? Yeah. yeah, make a motion we yeah. move the review of the 12 14 22 meeting minutes until next week's meeting. Second, uh, roll call vote, please. Joan Savoy, yes. Linda Mack, yes. James Gates, yes. Anne LaCroix, yes. Mm. 2.1 enforcement order 158 Main Street. Mail 11723, a status update from property owner that includes a short term plan to sub migration of sediment and a long term plan to address cleanup and um, remediation. Stan Dillis is here to present. Stan Dillis and Roy, this is either the property owner here, the water is here. Mm -hmm. um, McGee just so I guess got on board with us, so we got on board with him last week. So since then, we've uh, we flagged the wetlands, we toboed the field. I have some pictures. And right now, the way the conditions are right now, all we can do right now, until I have more stuff on paper to us, come up with some temporary mitigation to stop what's happening. Because we can't really get in there and work right now. It's too wet. It's going to make more of a mess than anything we could even imagine we have to figure out where that water is coming from and try to mitigate that then we have to get to mitigate whatever was done to the wetland and clean up the silt that's on the rails rail thing on the other side so i see you said they put out some more hay bales yeah where, the, the, where the, the main water is coming right down the middle, middle of there uh yeah, down the bottom of yeah the just the demon pulling up some of the for the pictures today i think it's the last couple can do. Hartley, can I have screen sharing permission, please? <laughs> Maybe you got on the bathroom. Oh. oh. Got it. You're good, Jessica. Stan, while we're waiting for those photographs, um, I don't see it getting any drier. I mean, if, when things start thawing out and as time moves on, it, I mean, now is as dry as it's going to be. You can keep going. It's towards the end. I just there hasn't been an increase in facilitation. Um, Well, in here you can see the addition, the new bales because of the color difference. But you can see that it is catching the silt. I think they 
could he be so up even further from what I was saying with that culvert is under the rail trail to actually clean out some of that sediment that's in there and put a ring of hay bales around yeah. there to stop the sediment. From, and I'd like to see them even dump some trap rock on the upstream side of the hay bales too. Yeah. I know that's mm -hmm. probably in the resource area, but I think we got to mitigate what's well, going yeah, on. Yeah. I, I do know that 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 whole area when the pipe when I put the pipe in, it I had cleaned it all out. Right. So it did flow. And I think yeah, anything to keep the so I mean, anything to keep it from going through there until we come up with a plan to right. clean it up and fix yeah. it. The one of the issues that we're gonna have here is a lot of what we're gonna be doing is gonna be in the resource area because that's where the that's right. where the damage is. Well so, that's where the <clears throat> the damage was done. That's what I mean. So yeah. we're gonna have to mitigate that somehow. Exactly. And I'm thinking if we can figure out where that water is coming mm -hmm. from and mitigate that. And then probably down at the bottom, we're gonna have to create some kind of a detention basin that would be like a wet basin that the water would flow into when it would trap any sediment and then maybe restore that burn along yep. the railroad. That would be nice so to the restore water it, yeah. The water has to stay there or go into the ground and infiltrate. Yep. The soils there aren't great, so it's not gonna be great yeah, infiltration, yeah, but, right. but I think we can mitigate the runoff and keep it on this site where it always was, because it was stopped by that by burn. that burn that yep. was there. So, but once I don't have, once I have the topo on paper, and I can look at some options, then we can come back and talk to you again. But I think yeah. if we can protect the inlet of that culvert under the rail trail right now, so any sediment that we get by yeah. these hay bales would be stopped there, and then that could be cleaned up. That'd so, be good. Now, Stan, did you do the work for the rail trail? Yeah, we did. So you, I think, didn't you have to do we a delineation along, all the way up? Along, right? along that edge of the yeah. rail trail. Yeah, but did, did you go but, all the way up towards 119? No, it was a wetland? no. Oh, we okay. just went. We right. just went linear to the trail. Okay. So we didn't go and, all the yeah. way up. But we, right. we have since been out there and flagged that what we okay. all the way up. It's all. So, so that's that's the update is that's where we're at with trying to come up with a, a solution to this. But all I can offer you right now is this short term fix to kind of mitigate what's happening right now. Okay. What's the timeline to have something? To Realistically, us? probably. Probably, I probably need a couple of weeks. Okay. Next meeting? Yeah, that's next only week. one week. Oh, next meeting, one week, right? Yeah, because we so, have So, what's the delay, please? Because we were supposed to have a final plan tonight. I just got hired a couple of days ago. I haven't had a chance to... Okay. So, it's to not on... That. It's not your... I mean, I, I met I met Terry out there on Friday. Because mm -hmm. that would be Friday, correct? Was that on Friday? A week ago, Friday. A week ago, Friday. But, but, you know, just to get... It's just... The course of getting things done. So, okay. so the yeah, last thing was said weather. So right. You, I'm, so is there short term things that we can come up with tonight to at least prevent further sedimentation? I know you said the yeah. clean out of the yeah. inlet, pay bail it. Are there other short term solutions that you can recommend? The only other Just thing the, I could think of is um because those what uh those eight yeah. hay bales made a difference, you know, doubling them up. Right. I think they you can see some of it's going around there. It's going around wider. Yeah. And maybe we could put some up at the well, we try it would only I guess uh, now that I'm saying this, it wouldn't make much difference up where the water's coming out of the pipe because that's clean water. Yeah. So maybe halfway down that swale, we could yeah, put a, that a row of eight bales across yeah. there too. That would be good, just to slow it down. Slow the water down. Yeah. And, it'll and then, like you said, to, to have it go all the way because the water is going around. Right. Have it go all yeah, the way. Yeah. Exactly. It's from around. It will start to scour that area. Right. Too. Right. And that would be a mess. That would have made the problem worse. Right. Right. Because that, that area is untouched, but the water goes around it. I think, I, I think in the short term, that's all, that's the only thing I can come up with to tell you what to do. And I think that's a fix that and how, could be done pretty easily too. And, and how soon could that get done? I think I think we we'll probably do that tomorrow, right? Put some hay bales, put some additional hay bales across the bottom there, and then maybe halfway up the slope, run hay bales in through this whale, and then go to the end of that the culvert under the rail trail and do I don't know. Some of the machine can get over there, right? It's not good. No, so you like, are we allowed to drive down the real trail? I think 
But, but Bill, that's, she's, <laughs> Joan's right there. She can answer that question. Well, it's frozen. It's salt snow covered. So drove down. So Bill, Bill has said that he's okay. So I think the answer is yes, but if there was no, yeah, yeah, we're not. We have been and everything. I went down there with the back all the other time. No, right. And I can. Uh, I can put a little light on it where the water's coming from. It's coming out of that twelve inch pipe. Right. The, D, the DOT has been out there four different times. Not there, pipe. It's coming out of a perimeter. It's coming out of the back of that office. That's where that, all that water is. Right is that brand new? Is that a new perimeter drain? No. No. It's, so it's, it's been there a while. Right. Yeah. It's, it's there. not new. Right. So, it's so that's stopped. where it that's it pre existing. Stopped. It wasn't exposed. Now yeah. it's exposed. And now it's pulling all the water. It's exposed because of the digging you did, or I didn't do any digging. I absolutely didn't. Do so anything. how did it get exposed? Well, when, we up, when I went over there with James, there was something that was pumping out of there. We thought it was like with the uh, with the sump pump, mm -hmm. and I think that loosened the soil up there. And now all of a sudden, the twelve we didn't have any twelve inch pipe there, and all of a sudden now you got a twelve inch pipe that it was exposed from the water that was coming out of there. Previous, yeah. Well, I mean, it had it was been there, but I think it was there what, for a long time. What we were trying to do is capture the water from that pipe and and maybe figure out where we can send it so it doesn't go is, out of Is that on pipe. your property or her property or the dentist over on my property from her property. But I don't but, know I don't know exactly where the pipe okay. is yet when we get everything on paper. Well. Yeah, okay. Um I'd like to uh, Mr. Chair make sure this does get done tomorrow and I'd also like to hear what our agent has to say. Please. Well, if it doesn't get done tomorrow, it's going to be too cold on Friday or right. Saturday. Right. That's why, so that's why I want it done tomorrow. tomorrow. But then again, it does freak with the freezes. Well, even they're not on. But that's nice if it freezes and the hay bales are in there. They should, if they're in there before it freezes. Before you it freezes. Try to put that's, them in there when it's that's a better so situation. Now, will you check to make sure that they're done properly tomorrow? I can't, yeah, Can I you do that? If you, uh, if you request me to do that, I that would be that. great. That would be great to make sure they're done properly. That's been an issue. I can meet all the everybody was talking about everything, and then it's going to take an hour to put them in. I can go do something else in the back. Yeah, that's okay. Good, thanks. We follow directions pretty well. Good. Leave us the direction. Jessica, your input. Um. My child is screaming upstairs, so I've been a little distracted, admittedly. Um, okay, so we're going to expand the hay bales laterally down here at the bottom. We're going to put a couple, like, double armored rows of hay bales about halfway down the slope. Can you guys see this picture? Mm -hmm. um, and then put hay bales up by the water... No, just no, no. just halfway. No, just halfway. Gonna, okay. So I hear, I hear what we're talking about with water. I've been hearing it for months. Um, this is a mapped stream channel. In case anyone is not aware of that, um, it would not be a mapped stream channel if its only source of hydrology were sump pump discharge. Um, it's very obvious when you are up in the parking lot or driving on 119 that there, I guess we don't have pictures, but there's a huge area of shallow groundwater at the headwaters of this linear feature. Give that a is picture that you took last week. Um, I can get that, yes, momentarily. Um, a good point. It's the, the the ledge is shallow there, it, and there is a lot of groundwater coming off of it. Um, so I took this last Wednesday on my way home. Um, <laughs> this was like 20 minutes after the meeting was canceled for inclement weather. But um, I guess mm. this is as good as you can see it. Um, I mean, snow is good. You know, everyone thinks wetlands in the winter are impossible, but it's really good because you can see exactly where the warmer groundwater is um, because it's melting the snow. And 
you can see all these little stems here are cattails too, remnant cattails from the fall, which started to sprout up after the vegetation removal that was done in the fall. Um, and then we just reached the end of the growing season. So they're, they, you know, they went dormant. Um, so there is certainly no evidence of there being one main jetting stream of water coming from the right side of this photograph. Um, you can see how large this area is of shallow groundwater. And shallow groundwater can just be because it's shallow groundwater. It can be because it's perched on top of ledge, which is likely the case here. Um, but there's definitely more than one source of hydrology feeding this feature. So that cannot be forgotten or discredited. And I soil probed it. And I there's a culvert right to the left of right. right. And that and had any water come through it for like four years. There's water coming through that. I think it's somewhere up here. Here, yeah. there's water coming out of there, and there's water coming out of the uh the pipe. The greater amount of water coming out of that 12 inch pipe. And it stopped when I put the cap over it, but it's an old pipe, so the pipe is broke out, so it's coming around the cap that we put on it. Are, are you years. talking about the culvert pipe? Is it called? No. The pipe What's the pipe that, that has a cap on it? That's a perimeter pipe. That, that was perimeter. a four inch pipe. That's a 12 inch pipe. And that belongs to the dental office. Exactly. And you put a cap on it? Yes, I was told by the people in the building department. It's on my land to cap it. Uh, Eric said that he was going to cap it when he first looked okay. at it. He said, we'll cap it. I was told to it. And I, I told everybody here that that's what we were going to mm -hmm. do before we did it. I told James that, and we tried to stop the water, and it didn't work for probably a couple of weeks, and then it, it broke out of the pipe some other it's a pipe. Well, when I, I did, I took my soil probe, and I, I, there is ledge yeah. in the wet areas. I, I poked down, some of it was pretty shallow. It makes sense. I mean, if you cap the pipe, the water is going to try to go somewhere. Right. It's going to come out somewhere. But, you know, you go... Going up really, the, the ledge is put right. and one, we got inches down. We got to figure out where the water coming from, but that's second that we can take care of. Because it is, like Jessica problem, said, right it's, a it's a mapped stream, a mapped stream. A straight out of mine. So yes. when the town put the road in, mm. put the culvert in to continue mm. the stream. So there is a stream. I've been saying this from the beginning across the road, up, and it goes up across the other side. So anyway, I think, I mean, one of my comments is. We had mentioned putting like a detention basin there at the bottom of the hill. Um, yeah, Sam said he's going to do that. But I mean, that, I mean that's fine. He's the engineer. I'm not. But we we cannot just stop or terminate the flow of water because it is a stream. So we we need to keep hydro the source of hydrology flowing to through those that stream under the rail trail into the wetlands beyond. We need to keep that source of hydrology going. So you need to put some infrastructure in that traps the sediment, but then allows the water con to continue flowing unimpeded so that we do not have downstream impacts. And we talked about that a little bit a few minutes ago. You were probably attending to a crying kid. <laughs> He's asleep now. I just got the monitor, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the ideas that I suggested we put up some kind of a detention basin at the bottom or he's through that berm that was there so the, so the water can't flow out onto the trail. No, but right. And you, <laughs> but you, need like an, you still need an outlet, though. Well, yeah, you can have an outflow pipe. Yeah. An, over, okay. right, an overflow. Oh, yeah. Above, yeah. That's above. Right. So, yeah. But that's not for us to say. So would, okay. Um, Jessica, did you hear that um, the hay bales will go up tomorrow? Yes. And then Stan is going to work with them to make sure they're done properly. So Thank you don't you. have to yep. you don't have to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not walking out there anymore, guys. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's like the last thing you want to do. So uh, Stan will do that. And uh, um, okay. And then they'll have um at our we, we have to decide at our next meeting. You you said it will take you two weeks, Stan. I, you I couldn't have it to our next meeting? I can come back at the next meeting and show you where I am. And if, if I can have something, I, I certainly will. Okay. But I just don't want to guarantee that. I don't okay. want to overpromise and underdeliver. Right. 
So can we put well, you this never on? Me down? I'll say that. So well, I, 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 <laughs> agenda, Matt, and well, I can just put it on the agenda. I can have that and give you an update. I just want to make sure. Okay, we at least where we're at and what we're thinking. Of. Yeah, I need a hard stop on this. You know, like we talk in our second two meetings out then that this work is done, or are we still going to say it's too cold out? I mean, this has been it's since not. the fall. Yeah, well, if I had my choice, area because it's, I would say do this in August when it's dry, because otherwise it's going to make a big mess. You're not going to, you're not going to build a detention basin and a berm that's going to be stable with the soil conditions that are there now. Yeah. Right, but but I think the or stabilization that the, you're going to do is important. Right, temporary right? stabilization um, and permanent. And if you yeah. want to recommend that in your plans, yeah. that the actual construction of all these things right. get done in August, that's fine. We might right. pass so it. I, I think if thing. you try to do it now, it's just, it's, yeah. it's going to fail. Right. Because part of this detention basin adjacent to the rail trail is going to be fill, yeah. refilling what was disturbed there. Yeah. And I don't know how you get that stable this time yeah. of year. And as long as the um, siltation is cleaned out, it's stabilized. There's no more siltation going through right. there. There's no more water rushing and could just des could destroy the rail trail right. by watching that. Right. I, um, I'm afraid that removing if we if the siltation isn't removed until August, though it's going no, to no, I all think we know, that now. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think we can now. really construct anything now. Because if you yeah. leave that there, it's just going to continue to go through and spread right. out on, exactly. the, on the other side of the culvert. So once you get the hay bales out. <clears throat> stabilize the area with the water and all that then if you get all the siltation out and that should be done by hand yeah right well, so I, um, I think you might be able to get there. some of it with a machine yeah but, it's it, but it's also pretty far in there and I, the, uh, yeah, the sil it's it, that's a 12 inch pipe so it's minimum uh, 15 inches thick yeah so it's not what, right it's the matter with getting it done by hand there's a lot of it in. that's okay it should be done by hand because otherwise the machine's going well, to mess things up. To put the fill into the bucket of the well, but yeah, there's other, so there's other like, ways. You, you can sit on the trail and root. I think they can get a lot of it out with a, like a, a mini excavator or something. Find someone with a long yeah. stick. And, that, and then some of it might have to be cleaned up by I, I think you'll be there forever if you try to, if you try to take it out with a wheelbarrow. It's a pretty big task. Not that I'm saying no, I'm not no. saying that I'm not trying to make it e easier or anybody, but I think it'd be more successful if you get in there with some kind of a small machine that could just go down the rail trail and reach over and, and clean it out. Yeah, because that's how it was done the first time. Right. When you put that stuff in and say you clean it out. Oh. So I think step but one is let's get way, this. It goes all the way down to the property. Three, five, it's just really far. So and that might have, no, that might have to be, you might have to get in there and do yeah. that by hand, but yeah. around the end of the culvert, there's that bloom that comes out. From the rail trail, if you can reach with it, that's fine. Be something like but that. further down, right at definitely that, by hand. The edge of the, the stone dust is the work limit through there. Yeah. So, what do you mean? Originally, because it, that the whole section is, it's sweat lines. It's in the buffer. Yeah. yeah. It's in the buffer zone. Because when that was constructed, we had to we had to do the rep right. replication area yeah. adjacent to it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they really okay. you have to do it from within the that rail trail. Yeah. Um, footprint. And then beyond that, where equipment can't get to, it should be done by hand. Agreed. Because it should be cleared out from further down because it went right. very far. We'll have to come up with a plan. Yeah. That. I mean, I've, I've seen people have to do it. You probably have with buckets. <laughs> I, I don't. I you don't personally. I, 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 yeah, yes. <laughs> I don't actually go in there with a shot. Unless, okay, well, <laughs> I, I have a comment, question, a little slew of notes. Um, so we currently have hay bales down, and they clearly haven't been doing what we had hoped. Um, they, they are now because they double. They are now okay. So what I would probably recommend is clean out the channel by hand now. 
um, because just 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 something to have like a control. So when you put in the new hay bales, you actually have like a baseline for monitoring that these new hay bales are temporarily stopping sedimentation of offsite resources. Okay. Um, because if you know if we just throw down a whole bunch of other hay bales and assume it's going to work, we don't have any way to measure if it is or not. Yeah, you um, also have filled the area already, which doesn't have a terrible amount um, more capacity. So I like that idea, Jessica. That, um, I think or that's a good idea. maybe put some like reball. I don't know some something in there to measure that there is very little deposition happening. Um, like, I don't know, some spray paint, some rebar every four inches, a different color or something. And then that way you can know what the depth of deposition is and monitor that because if we just assume hay bales are gonna work for the next six months, I mean, that's, that's a little risky, I think. Um, and then it's important to note that all of this is pretty much mapped within priority habitat for endangered species too. Um, so that needs to be considered and probably communicated with NHESP, um, especially if we're gonna be doing work on their property. Oh, that's mass wildlife property. That's NHESP. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah the back uh, part of the field is endangered. Right, it's endangered species, but the, right. the actual property. Oh, property. yeah, on the other side of the rail trail. Isn't yeah. it DC? No, it's not. What is it? Mass wildlife. That's it, yeah. I saw this on the FRO. Okay. Um, so, obviously, that's something for you, for you guys to decide on, but just, yeah, it looks like it's the Squanacook WMA all back there. So we, we know a very locally sensitive area. So uh, Jessica, so are, are we comfortable then with a, um, a motion that we, the new hay bales need to be, as indicated, need to be installed no later than tomorrow and that the channel needs to be cleared no later than yeah. And, and you need to put your mic on uh, off. Yes, uh, I think it's. Uh, yeah. Oh, there. Sounds like she's in that culvert. No, there's no. Um, Jessica, did you say that the channel should be cleaned up? I can't. I yeah, right. I, I think it should be. Um, I mean, I obviously, I get right now, like, there's no passage of aquatic species happening, so that's lucky. Um, but I think it should be cleaned out for the purposes of monitoring that there is no further deposition once the, these new hay bales are installed. Talking <laughs> inlet side or outlet or both? Uh, probably definitely on the, the upstream side. Um, and then maybe just helping help clean out like the culvert plus a few feet on the downstream side, but obviously not extending greatly into the wetland. But just to just for a easier area to monitor. Um, what, if, what about the, the, you said rebar with more color markings? I don't know. Just, I just, Something to indicate sediment level. Let's, okay. Uh, is it fair to say this this could be done by um, our next meeting, be reported on February eighth? No, next week. Yeah, that's yeah. February eighth. Is that February? Yeah, yeah today's the first. No. Oh Crazy. my god. I, I think that's a fair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well. Okay. And the work be done tomorrow. Well, and yeah. The, bales, the hay bales right? tomorrow. The and hay bales. Then the... I think yeah, hay bales tomorrow, and then clean up. And, and installation of some like sedator, um, sediment depth, whatever. For the next meeting though. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Uh, 
I make a motion that um, the 158 Main Street by next by our next meeting, uh, February 8th, 2023, <laughs> in the area we've been discussing, indicate some type of sedimentation level, uh, install some type of se sedimentation level indicator. Uh, new hay bales, as discussed earlier this evening, are installed tomorrow. Uh, the channel is cleared out by hand and uh, in the upstream locations, the culverts cleared out and also uh, a few feet of downstream cleared out. Is that fair? Anything else? Well, I think the, the clarity of um, cleaning out the siltation, all of it, all the way down to the property, the next person's property. Um, so the uh, <coughs> I'll amend that by the next meeting. to add that then the siltation, all the siltation, all the siltation is also removed all the way to the property line. That's like that's far. Where it's gone. What are you recommending that it uh, stay? Jessica <laughs> recommended no, no, no. Well, well, Jessica recommended just a little bit out of the outlet to keep promoting the flow. But I think she wanted it for monitoring. That was the key. Um, hold on. I'm trying to find the picture. I draw my motion and we'll start again. By the next meeting, I'm suggesting that we have all the siltation taken out. That's what happens as long as that pipe is. That's what's causing the whole problem. It's actually not. It's the work If we compare this pipe when that first thing surfaced, we would be even be here. We don't want to hear about the pipe anymore. Thank you. It's just not true. But if I clean it out now, if we clean it out now, and when the work is done, then it's going to fix the problem. We can make it, you know, go around the culvert and stuff. But it's not, it's not I think I agree. We need to, we need to fix it. <laughs> fix the sedimentation problems and make sure that they're mitigated and not going to continue to happen before we clean up any do the temporary measures now, but before we clean up all the all the harm that's been done or all the sediment that's there, we need to make sure that we stop, stop the sedimentation. So we need to come up with a plan to. Well, I thought I thought you were pretty sure that the hay bales that you were going to put well, well, stop the well, sedimentation. Well, but that's just, just a temporary measure. Right so you think more we sediment will come? Well, yeah, I didn't know it will. It was moving today. Right. I, I, I shoveled out that pipe, or I had help from the guys I work with. We shoveled up like those, it was yeah. like three man hours to do it, and it was already filling back up yeah. by the time we're done. Now, that was before Terry put more hay bales up right. top, so which the, has made a huge difference. The hay bales will help, and the sediment will get caught behind it. But suppose we have three inches of rain and, and it washes out again. I, I don't want to have to go into that downstream side again to do it. So, once we create Whatever we're going to create there, the basin, the detention basin with the berm, so that no water, no water is going there. Then we can clean it up more effectively. Right. And, and so, one time and so, do it right. So I'll comment a little bit. So if um, Thank you. looking at this picture, so the culvert I think is right about here where the mouse is. I'm not really sure, but when we Thank first started looking back here in like October, November, whatever. You could still see a stream channel and it was maybe a foot and a half wide. Um, and now it is what, four, five, six feet wide and completely full of sediment. So we, we the stream channel is gone. I know I know we want to call it a wetland now, but I can I can find old pictures, but it was a very obvious stream channel before. Um, so I I I don't think we need to have all of the sediment cleaned up by next week. I don't think that's really feasible. Um, but I think trying to restore just like the first like four to six feet ish so that we can have unimpeded hydrologic flow going back here is probably what's important. Um, and then I, I do think it should be cleaned up before 
while or while the herbaceous stuff is still dormant because once you start getting veg growing back in here it's going to be a lot harder to clean up the sediment without disturbing the natural wetland habitats back here um just you know wetland habitats alone but also whatever endangered species habitat is back here too um so natural heritage probably have comments on how they what method of sediment removal they would prefer to see based on whatever species is listed back here too. Um, so, but yeah, so that would, that would be target cleanup probably before, I guess, typical species come out like April 15th ish. So, just so, so instead we'll say that at the next meeting, the, um, what Jessica said to clean out, we do, but we have a timeline of when the rest of the sedimentation will be taken out. So we have a date for time when that will come out. And it should be obviously before April. Right. It could be in the next, you know, the sooner the better because this damage is, is just getting more serious. And we'll get this one for the contractor says that uh, when he gets done with it, he's going to take care of that. Yeah. He's going to bring stone in, he's going to bring pipes and everything. Same thing as Dan is working with him, and that's when it's going to be thought. I think it looks like contractor to me. Do you have a contractor yeah. already? Yeah, it was Andy worked with uh, Dan, and Dan said that he worked with him very well. He worked with him in that, and he's the one that came up with the plan. And uh, that's the two people that I'm working. So, Stan, are you coming up with a plan, or is Andy? No, we don't have to go. You're coming up with a plan. Because we'll that's to, what we need. Yeah, so let's Andy and get his thoughts, and whether we incorporate those or not, we may to be seen depending on what he's thinking of doing. Yeah, so yeah. No, it's, it's up to Stan to come up with a plan. Right. He just said, Dr. just said that. The chances when that was like you know. uh, before we yeah. did the, before we hired Stan before the new people directed me to talk to Stan and we can and I have to make whatever you are where else we can give us the time and the people or something we have to uh don't go don't go past into the next meeting in my opinion because if he, he comes up with a plan that is slightly different or we get national heritage feedback what we really do need on this it, it, no, i think so is natural heritage is going to be getting involved yes with the final plan we probably do want their input be, as to the yeah, sedimentation removal but i think we, we pretty much know how to deal with the uh i think the violations. they'll be notified as part of the purpose for 10. yeah and then they'll weigh in and yeah. if they have any specifications they want to how this is cleaned up um, and they'll weigh in relative to the species and not necessarily the Wetland Protection Act. So if they have any specifics that how they want it cleaned up, that'll have to be incorporated as a condition in or however intent. that works out yeah. with them. So, so when, when do we expect to notice an intent, I guess? That would be later than the next meeting, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's where the notice of intent is going to handle the final construction, right. how, to, how to address that's, what's there. I think this, two what we're doing this week is the first step. Yeah. And then the second step will be the notice of intent and how yes. we can fix it permanently. That's how I see it. So uh, heritage, natural heritage, do we want to just ask them to come and look at the sediment? You'll never get them out there. Yeah. I know. I'm like wondering why are people thinking they're going to comment on this project now? I've been trying to get someone to yeah. answer to return the phone call okay. for six weeks. So the comments that natural heritage the, want to be involved in the sedimentation they, removal they, is they not. Will. They well, they they might do. They'll, but the be, and they'll provide feedback if they the notice of intent will trigger them. Right. The notice of intent will trigger a response from them. And if they so you're want, saying they want. They have input there. So they'll give the it sedimentation input. removal might be pretty far out. No, no. I mean, we could certainly, um, you know, 
Yeah, it's it's not going to happen next week. No, no it's yeah. not. But it's, but it's but we'd like to do it before, as Jessica said, before the the uh, during the dormant season. Exactly. But what what's stopping us from us? Not us. I'm not doing it. But what's stopping you from doing a MISA filing like tomorrow? This what we're going to do as part of the notice of intent. We're going to do it with the MISA filing that's included in the. Notice okay, of I was just thinking to, to get ahead of it because. Yeah, at that, assuming like early April deadline. You do it ahead. Tough, but... You can do a separate visa filing, but I need the plan to, to right. do yeah. visa filing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, it's pretty uh, clear what we need to do, right? I make a motion. Oh, John, did you have? Did you raise your hand? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have anything you'd like to add? As the butter? No, I just appreciate everyone's addressing this and putting some work into it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, you know, everyone I'm wants sorry to work it took so long, though. I <laughs> everyone wants to work together here, you know, from Terry to Joan to us, and now Stan, who could drag into it. <laughs> um, but I, I would. You make a motion similar to what Joan had. The A bell is five two 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 twenty three tomorrow. Um, in the areas that were discussed, um, and then sedimentation removal by hand um, in the inlet channel that runs adjacent to the trail. The outlet side four to six feet. Uh, also the culvert. Um, as much as feasible because clean out both sides that some of it should push back through. Um, and then several sediment measuring devices, spring stakes, rebar, whatever, painted with um, indicators every six inches or whatever. Uh, at least two on the inlet, two on the outlet. And we add Jessica. And, oh, sorry, one more. Time. I'm sorry. Um, and then hay bales, as Stan would recommend after the sedimentation is cleaned out. On the inlet side, yeah. And Jessica, you wanted the first five feet of X restored. Four to six feet, you know. Four to okay. So we cover that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. James got it in his motion. Yeah. All right. Put a roll of hay bales on the downhill side too, so that anything that goes through the culvert. That's why I said whatever Stan recommends for <laughs> hay bale. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen physically seen it for a couple of weeks, so. Um, I would just make a note too about asking <laughs> where you can, where to dump the sediment that's removed from the stream channel because before it's just been dumped like immediately on the bank. Yeah, it's heavy. It's easy to, well, I know. <laughs> so it's easy to wash back in. So maybe find like a dedicated upland spot to to put it so that it doesn't run back into the channel. So we add that to the motion. Yeah. In, a, in an area outside of the wetland buffer. Right. Under the wetland buffer. Right. Thank you, Steve. The wetland and, and then also the at the buffer. next meeting, um, a timeline as to when you think the sedimentation can come out. I think that's really important. I, I, yeah, I think that and, um, I would say the timeline for everything associated should be wrong. I'm saying so it's yeah what you're saying, but adding to it right, like, like the like um, it's going to freeze over the weekend. Everything's going to freeze, but then it's warming up again. It's going to be in the forties yeah, again. Um, Forty nine, it's ridiculous. But um, so then it's going to be soft again, and you can get it out. Um, so just a timeline, uh, so we know. How soon? Because the sooner the better, in my opinion. So, do we have to restate the motion? No, just That's, add what I said. You added so, it, right? So be it. So be it. I second the motion. Roll call. Vote, please. John Savoy, yes. Linda Mack, yes. James Gates, yes. Yes, General, yes. yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. Thank, Thank you. Stand. Thank you. Thank you.
Yep, thanks, Joan. Thanks for coming in again. Okay, moving on to the Wild and Scenic Grant. Joan, do you need a copy of it? Do you have it? No, I have a Wild and Scenic Grant. Yeah. You can listen. Yeah. So, okay. The um, um, uh, National River Wild and Scenic Stewardship Council notified uh, the CONSCOM of their new round of grants, the Community Grants Program 2023 application. I completed it this afternoon. The project name is the Townsend Non-Native Invasive Plant Training at Adams Dam Area. It is in our drive. And thank you greatly to Matt and Jessica for helping me with some last minute items. I will. Um, I did speak with them, and because of the circumstances, they're going to let me get it in tomorrow. So that's not a problem. Um, effectively, so the, the the project is to um, I put out three RFPs to invasive experts, invasive mm -hmm. experts to come to town and to do a single uh, training um, for people from the highway department and cemetery and parks. This is a tremendous turn from the original um, grant uh, um, topic we had discussed at last meeting, which was signage um, right. stating uh, watershed area. So the reason it changed was because I got with Dave Vigeant at the um, water department and, I and we, there, this was not a lot of time to pull this together. And we realized so that we have to, we would have had to have submitted a detailed map where all the signs were to go, and then the um, the vendor issues on the signs and all that. So Dave and I, I told Dave, I said, Dave, this is not going to happen. But in the meantime, it did occur to me that um, we could really use some invasives and invasive. We're going to start simple because this was grander, and now it's scaled down. A, a single invasive training and um, um, uh, with members of cemetery and parks and the highway department plus volunteers. And they, uh, so this, I got uh, a very nice proposal from uh, Land Stewardship Incorporated, that's Joan Dealey that uh, you know, Joan, yep. And so they would come first to do an assessment and this, the two areas, uh, the large stand of knotweed in the Jeff Street parking lot and uh, down where, at the Oxbow or the, uh, where the uh, Squanico makes that turn mm -hmm. uh, the, to look at the um, Japanese barberry. So they would first come and do an hour-long assessment and walk with Hanscom, whomever, and get the lay of the land and then talk about what our goals are and all that. And then they would come back and do it. And this is all going to happen in May a three to four hour training for the volunteers, the highway um, folks and the cemetery and parks po folks. And they would bring tools of the trade, um, um, timelines, you know, how, how to remove, so the written materials and demonstrations, how to remove, when to remove, how do you keep coming back out of it? back at these species. Mm -hmm. And um, we would then create our own um, calendar with using their um, uh, timeline based on, yeah, based on growth um, of, you know, we're gonna do this here, then we're gonna do this then. And then by November 15th, we'd have a final report put together for them. And we lots of photographs to gauge this is what we removed. Mm -hmm. How did it come back? Or is at least the stand not flowering now? Um, so I also I included in the, so that their um, time was $1,500. I included in the proposal two um, um, tools, which are clearly everybody's favorite for this type of uh, for eradication, particularly of not weed, and they're called uh, uprooters, a weed wrench. I got a light and a regular one, because I know they can be really heavy. And then American Meadows has the no mo micro, micro clover and grass seed mix. I ordered 10 pounds of that because once you remove, you have to rehabilitate. So um, I asked mm, Roger, who's been helpful in, in Highway, if they have their own um, 
loam or we needed to buy loam. We said they got tons of loam. So anything we'd pull out, we can loam out. I'm sure it's full of weeds. <laughs> so what you do is you, you go to the loam. That's part of our, our plan. You go to the loam, you cover it with black plastic, and you kill, kill the weeds. You can get the seed mix right here at the um, grain store. Oh, thank you. All right, well, good. So well, we'll, just we'll, conservation mix. All right, we, well, we'd rather support them. So it gets no, no taller than six inches, right? Yeah, it's, right. a cool, it's a clover festival. Yeah, so, so I had to include, like, I, I put it in at that, and we don't have to use this vendor. bucks for 50 pounds. Well, but then maybe it's not the same, pounds. maybe it's not the same stuff. Yeah. We'll check. And then I got, I ordered some galvanized, quarter-inch galvanized hardware cloth because the um, Squanacook Meadows grant that has been awarded for the, the volunteer group that's going down there to help with the native species habitat. They also have been advised to make sure the invasives are removed and they've been told that galvanized, this, right. this type of hydro cloth helps strangle the new growth of so, the not weed. Well, yeah. well, they get a grant for Squanacook Meadows? Or however, how, however they got the, the whoever, I'm sorry, I may have misspoken that okay. they have a grant, but that project, which has already been submitted and assessed and they're ready to go when they're well, ready to go, they it. know they know about the hardware cloth. Yeah, and they, they, Joel yeah. did know about it and had heard about it. I guess it started in England. Um, so I thought, well, we'll get one roll just to have in our arsenal. Mm -hmm. So the grant, you can read the whole thing. I don't want to keep us any longer. You can read the whole thing online. Um, I kept it to the four How pages. How much are we asking for? Oh, two, thank you. $2,262.98. That's cheap. So hopefully this will engender conversations in the community. Yeah. And then we can, from here, we can work toward a kind of comprehensive, systematic you know, years long plan to really get rid of all of the stuff, you know, along the roads, especially down in the Oxbow part of the Squanacook where that barberry is. The, the stand down there is at least 300 by uh, feet by 15 feet. It's a big stand. And I know that would probably take some chemicals, but I didn't get it. And it's inert chemical that doesn't go into the soil. But I didn't get into that. I, I had looked at it, but I scaled back just, just this easy peasy. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, the employees uh, of the departments, particularly Rogers that I've spoken with, they're really excited about it. And, and they were excited to hear about the no-mo mix. And, um, you know, we've got not we all over the place. So the, they can all apply these new learned sk these skills that we all learn. We can all apply. We can go, oh, look at that, and rip. Yeah, and yeah, Good. so yeah, That's it's, it's a start. Thank you for doing it. Thank you, you're welcome. All right, so do we need to vote to submit this or it's already submitted? No, I haven't submitted. We need to vote okay. approval for me I'll to make a motion uh, to submit this grant application to, what's it called again? Wild and Scenic. Yeah, yeah. Wild and Scenic Stewardship Council. I'll second that Council. motion. Whatever it is. And second. It. Thanks, Sam. Uh, before I ask for a roll call vote, Joan, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you for putting your time into it. My pleasure. Um, you know, as we're all volunteers, um, so I know time is of the essence, especially yeah. for this yeah. particular bill. Thank you for making this a priority. Yeah. Well, it feels good. So you're very welcome. It, it was, I had no idea what I was getting into because all the other grants I've worked on, like we yeah. had help, really so, good help. Like uh, Joan and, and, and Ronnie and uh, Eddie. We'll and, vote on this, please. Okay. Yeah, Savoy, yes. Linda Mack, yes. James Gates, yes. Anthony John Lillian. Anne McCoy, yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, Do you have anything else, or was that it? Items for discussion in the next meeting is we have 12 14 22 meeting minutes, and again, uh, the enforcement order of 158 Main Street will be on the agenda again. Good. Um, so next meeting is Wednesday, February 8th, 2023, at 7 p.m. Board of Select Chambers, second floor, and it will also be held via virtual Zoom. Um, and I have a uh, motion to I'll make a motion to close adjourn. at 7.55. Second. Roll call vote, please. Savoy, yes. Mm -hmm. I can. James Gates, yes. 
Yes. Yeah, Thank you for joining us. Thank you.